In 2003, an international team of scientists announced that they were able to fully sequence the human DNA, and this opens new research avenues for understanding complex diseases, including cancers. The Human Genome Project was one of the greatest achievements in the recent scientific history, but even the founder of the project expressed frustration because differences in genes is only explaining a small proportion of disease risk. What they have was only half of the story. Shortly after the Human Genome Project, a cancer epidemiologist named Christopher Wilde proposed to complement the genome with an exposome. The exposome is defined as a totality of environmental exposures that we experience during our life. It includes diet, lifestyle factors, toxic chemicals present in air, water, and consumer products, infections, drugs, and stressful events. But it also includes markers resulting from the interaction between these exposures and the human biology. The exposome includes hundreds of thousands of markers. The concept of the exposome is a game changer because in most epidemiological studies, we evaluate only a few exposures at a time and are likely to miss important factors related to breast cancer. Another limitation with our current study is that we, we always use, we heavily use questionnaires to reconstruct exposures to diet, lifestyle, or drugs. If you're part of a study, for example, we can ask you how many glass of wine have you been drinking during the last week? Often it's easy to, rem to remember, unless you've had too many. But if, we, <laughs> but if we ask you how many times have you been exposed to chemicals in drinking water during the last year, you can answer. If you don't measure it, you don't know. So the exposome calls for measuring all environmental exposures in a single sample of blood. When first introduced in 2005, it seemed impossible to measure hundreds of thousands of exposures and map the human exposome. So why now? Because now we have the technology and computational tools to map the human exposome. Today, we can measure expression of genes, modification to proteins, and small molecules, including toxic chemicals and molecules produced by the cells, such as hormones, vitamins, or lipids, in a single sample of blood. Today, we can capture thousands of exposures and their interaction with cellular processes and gene expression. And with access to several state-of-the-art facilities, California researchers are well positioned to map the human exposome. So our proposed idea is that instead of looking at only a few exposures at a time, we can map the human exposome and evaluate which one of these thousands of exposures are associated with breast cancer risk. For example, using blood samples collected earlier in life, we can compare the exposome in women who have developed breast cancer later in life with those without the disease. Then we can see how they are different and what markers are strongly associated with breast cancer risk. Then we can target these markers in follow-up studies to better understand where they are coming from and how they interact with our own biology. Some of these markers might point to toxic chemicals or lifestyle factors or dietary factors. This approach was successfully used to discover that a molecule called trimethylamine N oxide, which is produced by the interaction between dietary nutrients and the gut bacteria, is a major cause of coronary heart disease. Follow-up studies have shown that high blood levels of these molecules were associated with, with a 23% higher risk of cardiovascular events and a 55% higher risk of mortality. So this knowledge can be used to design strategies to prevent high blood levels of trimethylamine N oxide by either modifying diet or targeting the gut bacteria. So this story reinforces the idea that a data-driven or agnostic approach can discover important exposures related to breast cancer. Using existing California cohorts of young girls and adult women with different socioeconomic levels and ethnicity will ultimately identify novel environmental factors related to breast cancer and inform the development of prevention strategies that can reduce exposure to these levels and lower the incidence of breast cancer across the California population. If we expect to reduce the burden of breast cancer, it is time to discover the unknown causes, because we cannot change our genetic, but we can modify our environment. Awesome, thank you. Um, <clears throat> any questions from the judges? I guess I'd ask again how it might be implemented. Could you put it closer to you? How it might be implemented, how you might use it to reduce um, the incidence across socioeconomic statuses? Yes, the idea is to select um, exposure that are strongly linked with breast cancer in different communities. 
And then when we identify this exposure and link them to a source of exposure, then we can, we can design some prevention strategies to reduce exposure in that particular population. So some might be sort of policy level interventions and others might be individual level? Yes, exactly. So first it's a discovery phase. And then once we identify, we can target this in different population. And then when we identify the source of this exposure, then we can develop some policies or prevention strategies to reduce the exposure either by using individual actions or using like a state policy or. Okay, awesome. Um, <clears throat> one question, I, any more, oh, I'm sorry, any more questions from the judges? No? Um, one question I have with so many cofactors of the exposome, diet, exposure, genetics, sociology, race, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Do your, your whole application said that you thought this could be done in four to five years, and I'm wondering, it seems like a lot of cofactors to try and figure out in four to five years. Yeah, that's true, that's a lot. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> Put it but closer of, to your mind. But hopefully we have a lot of facilities, especially in California, that are well equipped to measure all of these factors, and different lab can measure different, we can use different platforms to measure different markers that result from different exposures. So we can really do it in, in four or five years to really identify the factors that are really important and strongly linked with breast cancer risk. Okay. Um, all right, and I have, and how many women do you hope to get in this study? Do you have a, do you have a idea about that? No, not really. But we know that there is a very precious cohort in California that already have archive samples and a lot of information about the women or young girls so we can leverage these cores and, and start measuring the exposome. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Thank you very much.